Hello everyone, welcome back to a couple books. Today, I have a few things for you. First thing is a special announcement, and then we're gonna do two book reviews. So, special announcement time. This is pretty exciting, and I am so glad you guys are all here to join me. I said in my last video, which I know was a bit ago, that we would be doing something special. Now, I love books, and I especially love sharing books, and I especially love giving books, and I really love to hear people's thoughts after they read a book that I gave them. It's like so exciting, especially if they love the book, it's really exciting, and if they didn't love the book, then it's like a super challenge to find something that they would like. So I'm always giving recommendations, I'm always suggesting books, I'm, I try to load out my books as much as I feel comfortable with, and I really try and do my best to make more book lovers out there, right? But I just passed 50 subscribers, as you guys know. I think we're at 52 or something like right now. I wanted to share some of the bookish love with y'all. Okay, so what we're gonna do, guys, for this special thing is we're gonna do a bookish, not bookish, we're gonna do a book giveaway, which is, I think, pretty exciting, because I love giving out books. The caveat to this is that it's gonna be a surprise what book you get, and the only way that you can enter this book contest is by commenting down below, interested exclamation point, okay and also making sure you're subscribed so if you're subscribed and you comment interested exclamation point followed by some of your favorite books i'm going to do a raffle and i'm going to choose one name i'm going to look at your favorite books and i'm going to send you a book that i hope you haven't read that is one of my favorites that i feel like kind of correlates with your taste so we'll talk about it more once the winner's picked but is I'm probably gonna pick the winner in a, like three or four days. As soon as we have a decent amount of comments, don't you guys worry, I'll let you guys know once I'm closing it down. But in the meantime, go ahead, subscribe, like, and comment down below, interested, exclamation point, and then a few of your favorite books. And I will let you guys know who the winner is, okay? So I'm super excited for this. I'm really excited to share some of my bookish love with you. I'm hoping that I will be giving you a title you haven't heard of before. And if you have heard of it, hopefully it's a title you haven't read before. And then, yay, more bookish love. Yay me, yay us, yay everyone. So with that out of the way, we're gonna move on to the second part of this video, which is going to be book reviews. So I read two very different books this week. I read my first book, which is The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman which is the first book in the Invisible Library series, I do believe it's called. And I also read The Troop by Nick Cutter, which was on my TBR last month, which is a horror, like psychological horror. Oh, and this is a uh, fantasy, uh, like adventure fantasy is how I would describe it. Like not medieval, but steampunky. So we're gonna go into both these books. It's gonna be all spoiler free, just so you guys know. And there we go. So to get us started, Genevieve Cogman, The Invisible Library, The Invisible Library series. The, sh the cover is so shiny. Look at that, people. Look at that. Wow. Wow, sir. Anyways, this book basically follows our lovely Irene, who is our main character, and she is the agent of the library. Now, you might be saying like, oh, couple. Is that library with a capital L? Well, yes it is, indeed. This is library with a capital L. I kind of envision it as like the library of Alexandria that like, you know, or something like that. But like basically this is this massive library that kind of exists between worlds, right? And in this library is every single piece of fiction across all the worlds that was ever written down. And there's these agents of the library who go out there and they collect these books, these works of fiction, and others that are out there in these various worlds, and they bring it back to the library to be safeguarded and kept. Now there's other mechanics to them collecting books and its purposes, but I'll leave that for you guys to find out. But we basically follow Irene, and she is a junior librarian, so she's already gone through her trainings, and she's already like a certified librarian going out there saving these books of works of fish fiction, not fish can, what's fish can, and so she is tasked by her um, authority figure or like the librarian above her to take on a partner whose name is Kai, at least that's how I pronounce it, it's K-A-I, and he's got like some mysterious parts to him. We don't really know what his deal is or what his story is, but he's another librarian and her supervisor asks her to take Kai on this mission. It's gonna be like a real quick mission, a week long she suggests. Go to this world where there is basically this like weird, like it's like half, it's like magic. 
I'll explain all that in a minute. But basically, they go to this world where there is magic, they have to collect this work of fiction, and they have to bring it back to the library together. They have to work as a team. Now, this was a really fun read. What I particularly loved was kind of the rules of the world. Without getting into spoilers, basically how it is, is throughout the universe, there's all these parallel worlds where they are all very similar to what we would know as Earth and they have all kind of have offshoots of each other. So they are kind of doing various things and it's all kind of around this idea of chaos versus order. Order is like extreme rationale, while like ours would be like an extremely ordered world, right? Like the world we live in. And then there's like the chaotic worlds, which like usually have magic in them and they usually have like fey and like different creatures. What's also interesting is on one side you have dragons who are like the agents of order and you have fey creatures who are like the agents of chaos. So it's really interesting because you're thrown into this world and while it's a really well self-contained novel, there's also a lot of other moving pieces and you're really introduced to a wonderfully, wonderfully, fabulously large plane of existence and it's super exciting. So this is the first book in the series. I think there's like five more books out or something like that. So I'll definitely be picking up the second one. In fact, I already picked it up. So I'll be letting you guys know what I think as we get more into the series. But that is The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. Okay guys, so I'm gonna give this four out of five stars. Honestly, you may be like saying, why wow, you loved it so much. I did love it so much. Um, I thought it was a strong start. Was it the strongest start to a series? No. Was the writing excellent? Yes. Were the characters pretty damn good? Yes. Was it original? Yeah. Like, it was original. The idea she's doing are original. Personally, I didn't love the magic system super much. And like I said, the ratings are pretty much a reflection of my viewpoint, in my opinion. It's not necessarily a reflection of the actual quality of the work. And due to that, I'm just going to have to say that for my personal opinion, this is a 4 out of 5 stars. It's not rocking my world. It's not like keeping me up at night thinking about it. I'm excited to get back to into it and I'm hoping that future books will be five stars. But at the moment, this is gonna be a four star. So, there you go. Next, we have The Troop by Nick Cutter. This book is gonna make me go vegetarian. Ew, 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 ew. It was so gross. It was so gross. Oh my gosh. It was one of the best horror books I've read. I think it's actually probably the first horror book in like two months that is like actually like grossed me out to the point that I'm like getting off the couch where I'm reading and like shaking myself and like making sure there's nothing on me. Ooh, it got to me. It was freaky. It was icky. If you are not someone who can stomach ick factor in books, don't do this, okay? The ick factor is high on this one. Basically the plot of this without going into spoilers is there's a troop, the 52nd troop I think they are. Um, they're Boy Scouts. And them and their Scoutmaster, I think is the correct term. I was not a Boy Scout, so I couldn't tell you. But them and their um, leader go off to this island that's off the mainland, and they're basically there for a week to basically like complete a lot of their survival trainings and do a lot of Boy Scoutish things, right? And so we have our Scout leader, and then we have five boys. We have like a typical span, like spread of boys. We have got like the super like jock one. Of course, these boys are like 14, so it's not really that solid, but it's like we got the jock one, you have the super nerdy one, you have like the like kind of bad boy leader, you have the follower, and then you have like the weirdo. So like, you have like a wide variety of boys on this boys trip, which add to a lot of diversity to the dialogue and add a lot of diversity to the overall story. Um, in addition to that, you also have like a lot of great like I wouldn't know if they're back flashes, but you have a lot of great like character development in this book that really make you feel for a lot of these characters. So as the story progresses and things get horrible, you are actually like, feeling oh I know you're actually feeling it. Like you're really like sympathizing with the characters, or at least you're sympathizing with most of the characters, because some of you do hate. Um, but you're starting to sympathize with them and you really do enjoy their presence and you really do enjoy being on this journey with them as much as you can with it being a disgusting horror book. Overall, they are basically on this island and they're with the Scoutmaster, as I've already said before five times because why not repeat myself? And there is this man that kind of shows up on shore and he is like super hungry. And when I say like super hungry, I mean like it's not like he's starving. I mean like he like legit cannot eat enough and he is just dying of hunger and you like look at him and like he's basically like just skin and bones like he is like not doing well and he keeps more and he's like 
wolfing down like dirt and stuff and he's just dying of starvation and so he shows up on the island and that's pretty much all I can tell you is without getting into spoilers so it's super exciting especially with corona it kind of gave me some ickiness um, but overall it was a fantastic book that while it had a lot of horrors and a lot of scares and a lot of ickiness it did not skimp out on character development each of the choices that the boys make on this island you can kind of see coming not in the sense that they're predictable but in the sense that they make sense with their character and how their character was developed as a person i also really enjoyed this book I liked it more than The Invisible Library. I'm going to give this 5 out of 5 stars because I really did think that this was an excellent book. I really was not bored at any point. I was interested. You would be on one character's POV and then you'd be like reading and you're like, oh my god, this is so interesting, keep going. And then it'd be like, oh, we're jumping to another character's POV. And I would want so badly to get back to that character's POV. But by the time I got back to that character's POV, I wanted to return to the other character's POV, if that makes sense. Like, I just was in it for the entire ride. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a bit of like, the first 50 pages were a bit slow for me, but after page like 51 and on, I don't know if that's the exact page, but 51 and on, it is insane. It is not put downable. The ending had me questioning existence in the sense that I had to go on Reddit and find answers, as we all do. But overall, a great read, five out of five, super hoary. Don't pick this up. Now, in terms of who should read which book, if you are, a super fantasy fan and like you're kind of looking for something fresh maybe something with like steampunk city um, with magical elements and love books I think you should pick this up like we all love books so that's kind of a give dead giveaway but if you're someone who's like really like loves fantasy but maybe he's kind of tired of the whole medieval thing this is a really fresh take if you are someone who's like new to horror and doesn't know if they're really into horror yet don't pick this up this is for, I would, in my opinion, this is a fantastic book. It's an amazing book, but I don't want to scare you away from the horror genre by you picking up this book because as your first read. It definitely took me a little bit to get into it, and I loved it, but I've also been reading horror books for like two months now. So that is just my personal opinion. You can disagree with me down in the comment section below. So those are my two book reviews that I've read recently. Um, as well, one last thing before we go, I just want to let you guys know that I'm currently reading Ascend Online by Luke. I cannot pronounce his last name and I can't even begin to try this one. And so far it's Lit RPG, which is going to be our next video. It's going to be all about Lit RPG. So I hope you guys are excited for that. I'm hoping to read you guys comments down below if you're excited about the book giveaway to celebrate 50 subscribers. So I'm really looking forward to doing that y'all and we'll go from there. So see you guys in the next video and we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye y'all.